Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk a little about clothing and especially the struggles that come with drawing it. Now clothing is a pretty broad term. They come in all shapes, sizes, colors, materials, everything. For the sake of simplicity, in the background you'll see me drawing two plain white shirts. These are obviously as everything should be when you're studying it from reference and they took me about 30 minutes to do. So if you want a real time follow along video, just drop down to 0.5 video speed and you're good to go. Now for the first thing that I'd like to talk about when drawing clothing, it's something that I'm pretty sure you can already see in the background happening. It's about sketching out your clothing and be it a shirt or pants or whatever, it doesn't really matter. The fact is that clothing always has very many shapes and simplifying them can be quite hard. So when you're sketching your clothing pieces, then I would make use of the rule that says you have artistic liberty when drawing from reference, which in a common language means that if you don't like something, just change it. And with shirts and skirts and everything that has a lot of folds, I tend to use my artistic liberty to simplify the shapes of the overall shirt or skirt or whatever I'm drawing. I keep the sketch loose and kind of make lines where the folds are and where I think the shadow part should go. So with only the sketch lines it might look a little weird at first. And then I quickly just make a new layer and mask it out with the polygon lasso tool to get like one good graphic shape. The reason behind that is because when I draw clothing I'd like to have good shape language. Which means I have either shapes that flow into each other, flow into other things that I have drawn on the canvas, or shapes that are standalone and, you know, appealing to look at. When hearing that for the first time, it can be quite overwhelming, you know, shape design, shape language, what the hell? Do I need to really look for all these things while drawing something? The answer is unfortunately yes, but it can all be boiled down to if it looks good, then it is good, and if it doesn't, change it until it looks good. Furthermore, having one graphic shape as your clothing piece, if the complexity of your clothing piece allows for only one shape of course, is one hell of an advantage when starting to shade that thing. Because you can just make a clipping mask over it and start shading without worrying to go outside of the shape or anything weird happening. It's just a whole lot easier. You don't need to, you know, reselect any mask so you have the lasso to on. You don't have to control click layers or, you know, alpha log others. It's just make layer, make clipping mask, draw. I usually tend to stick to fewer layers, which in the case of the shirt means like one layer for the graphic shape, one layer for the sketch and probably one layer for the rendering on top. Maybe a fourth layer for highlights and details if I feel like it. But my point is that even a non-complex piece of clothing like just a plain white t-shirt that I'm drawing right now that has many kind of different little medium sized and small sized shapes within the big silhouette of the shirt. So don't worry if you want to use like 10 layers for a plain white t-shirt. It doesn't matter how many layers you have, it matters how you use the layers. If you use them in a non-destructive way, meaning you have so many layers that you can always go back to something or go back and undo something, you know, like the shading or the bounce light, that is actually a better approach to drawing than mine is. Because with my approach, that I only has like one layer or so, I need to draw something and then it's there. And if I want to change it up, then I have to redraw everything. So don't hesitate away from many layers. It's not a curse, it's actually a blessing. I only use the few layers that I use in these two pieces because it's just a sketch. It's just something that I drew up this morning for this video and nothing else. I don't need to show it to anyone. I don't need to do anything else with it. If it's something more important, then I'm sure to use more layers than that. Now, let's go into the actual painting part, you know, the rendering of the t-shirt, which is quite straightforward, but it just needs a little bit of discipline. I'm the kind of guy that likes to go into rendering instantly with a soft brush. I just make it pretty tiny and then that's good. I can still make, you know, pretty sharp edges with a tiny soft brush. But in the case of clothing, I like to stay a little more graphic. That doesn't mean I'm gonna spill guts or whatever. That means that I use a kinda hard brush. Just because folds and everything, they have 
a pretty specific shape that's mostly triangular. That also means that the first pass that I do on rendering something like this t-shirt almost always looks pretty bad. So don't worry if you draw your clothing piece and you also use a hard brush and after doing the first little five minutes of rendering, you know, the first pass, you think about killing yourself or whatever. That's kind of normal. I mean, hey, we're artists. We think about that every second Tuesday, right? Now, jokes aside, please don't take this as a sign to end it all, all right? And... I don't know, seek help. Now that we're done with the daily dose of bad comedy, after the first pass that I do on rendering a shirt, I usually go in with a smudge tool and try to loosen up those graphic shapes that I drew with the hard brush so it feels more like fabric. And this step is very specific to the piece of clothing that I draw because some clothing is super shiny and others is pretty much matte. The plain white t-shirt that I'm drawing here is something pretty much in the middle of both. It's not super shiny and has highlights that perfectly resemble the light source, but it also isn't matte and only has like one gradient. To that comes that the fabric of this shirt is kind of thin, which means it can fold much more than something with a very thick layer of fabric would. Which means if this was a hoodie of some kind, then the folds would be much larger and some of the smaller folds wouldn't even be there. After I'm done with the smudging tool, I usually like to go in with a soft brush, you know, an airbrush, and put the flow of it far, far down you know, to like 40% max. And with that, I draw little gradients and smaller details. Just the things that I observe in the reference picture that I don't really have in my version of it. The things that I do with the airbrush are most of the times not perfect copies of what I observe, but more like hints to what the shape should look like. Things like extending the shadow to some part or putting a little more shadow or light into other parts just so the form of it reads better. I highly encourage you to always try to zoom out whenever you can or have this little navigator window on the top right like I do. Because first and foremost, we're not drawing every little detail. We draw the whole picture as one. That goes for clothing parts and entire illustrations. If the illustration or your clothing part doesn't look good from afar, it also doesn't look good from up close. And if you draw something, you know, let's say for Instagram or whatever, then your drawing will be seen in a tiny rectangle in someone's hand. The navigator window in the top right that you can see on my Photoshop is about the size of a normal phone, maybe a little smaller even, because some phones are just huge. And I'd like to glance over at that window every now and then just to see if the overall read of my sketch or my entire clothing piece or the entire illustration that I'm doing actually looks good. Because I can have the most well-rendered piece of clothing here that I want. It doesn't really matter. First of all, if you look at something and it doesn't look good from afar, then you're not gonna look closer. And second thing, 90% of all the drawing skill is making it to the point where you just have to render it. And rendering something, that's something, well, basically everyone can do given they have enough time. Of course, I'm not saying it requires no skills at all. Obviously, it requires a lot of skill. However, if you've got infinite time, then rather render away. You can do every little bit that you want. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, the thing I'm trying to say is don't get caught up in the details. And last but not least, what I do when drawing clothing, the last step is to draw bounce light and maybe some ambient occlusion and stuff. That's pretty self-explanatory. I take a brush that I, you know, feel is right for the job and just draw it in. Ambient occlusion is obviously the thing where when two surfaces are pretty close to each other and light doesn't really get there, it gets darker and bounce light is the light that bounces away from surfaces that are hit with the direct light source. Now, in an effort to not make this video too long, I'll be drawing everyone and I will see you in the next video that will hopefully be the one where I pitch some channels that are pretty good when you're learning art. I, I haven't done anything to this video because I made this one now because I didn't feel like doing the other one. Goodbye anyway and happy drawing if I didn't say that already.